All right, I have seven o'clock. You'll stand with me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We have uh, uh, Pastor McLeod here for the invitation. Thank you. Lord, bless the wonderful men and women here in the city of Galleon and those who are in leadership. Give them wisdom and peace and unity as they debate what is best for the city and to let your spirit reign. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, we have a full schedule for tonight, so um, we will uh, we'll get right into things. Um, we'll start with, uh, with the roll call for the uh, city council. Ms. Alt? Here. Mr. Botkins? Here. Ms. Durbin? Here. Dr. Fellner? Here. Mr. Richard? Here. Ms. Zeger? Here. All right, thank you. And uh, the elected officials? Mayor Leary. Auditor Satterfield. Here. Director of Law Palmer. Here. Treasurer Sparks. Safety Service Director Ward. Here. All right, thank you. Um, the motion to approve the minutes. Has everybody looked at the minutes from the last meeting? Is it, would anybody like to make a motion on the minutes? We have to adjust the minutes, is that right? Yeah, there is an amendment. I'll make the motion. To where we were. They need amended because I've had 703 million and we only have 7.3. So I wish it was 703 million, but you know, my finger got on the zero yeah. out of the point. <laughs> okay, go over there. So if you want to make the motion, I will make the motion to amend the agenda. The minutes. The minutes. Pardon? The, the minutes. minutes. Oh, the minutes. Okay. Yeah, the minutes. I'm sorry. Yes. I can't hear tonight for some reason. That's okay. You sound like you're all mumbling. <laughs> <laughs> yes, make a motion to she so one mo a motion to approve the minutes. I well, 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 second the amended. Um, um, or, I'm Mr. sorry, to, uh, uh, I'm sorry, a motion to uh, I will uh, second uh, uh, Ms. Durbin's motion to uh, amend the minutes to read uh, 7.3 million. Yeah, right. so 703. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Richard. Uh, all, all in favor? Aye. 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 I'll make a motion to approve the amended minutes from the last meeting. Thank you, Dr. Fellner. I'll second that motion. Second by Kara. That's all. I'm sorry. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Uh, minutes have been approved. Uh, motion carried. Um, I have a motion to. Uh, we well, we need we need to make an amendment to the yeah, agenda. If somebody would like to make that motion. We have to add two items. So it looks like uh, H. It looks like G and H. Mr. Yeah. President, I'd like to make a motion to add ordinance 2022-40 uh, to the agenda. All right, motion to add 2022-40 20, to the I'll second that motion. Second by Dr. Fellner. And then I'll make a motion. Oh, hold on. Oh, we got to, we got to all. Yes. Mr. Bodkins? Yes. Ms. Durbin? Yes. Dr. Fellner? Yes. Mr. Richard? Yes. Ms. Zeger? Yes. All right, motion carried. I will make a motion to add resolution number 2022-7 to the agenda. I'll second that. Ms. Zeger? Second by Ms. Saul. Roll call. Ms. Alt? Yes. Mr. Bodkins? Yes. Ms. Durbin? Yes. Dr. Fellner? Yes. Mr. Richards? Yes. Ms. Zegan? Yes. All right. Motion carried. I'd like to make a motion to approve the amended agenda. Dr. Fellner, approve the agenda. Yeah, second, second by that. Mr. Richard. Roll call. No. All in favor. Oh, I'm sorry. All in favor. Aye. Aye. All right. Agenda, uh, motion carried. We do have, um, we have somebody that, uh, that um, uh, signed a form. Uh, they have five minutes to speak. Uh, Mr. Jack Harpster, Sr. Um, uh, on, uh, on behalf of Central, or talking about the Central Hotel. Right. 
I had some questions and I did speak with the fire chief and the fire marshal, and I think she is involved. They're going to find the, get the batteries for our smoke detectors. Am I right? I'm aware of this um, sprinkler system. Well, they're, they're telling us our batteries and our smoke detectors, they will replace them when they go bad. And they won't replace, it'll be 20, at least 24 hours before they get to it. I told them I would be out in the street because I'm not always in the truck. Now, Fire Marshal Eagle was in and he said that they talked it and they thought that the city was going to buy batteries for us and put them in for us to be Also, the manager was asked by two different ladies about an emergency plan so that in case of a real emergency up there, we know where everybody's out. Her words were, the fire department will find them. So I know Todd was working on that, and I'd like to say thank you for that. Uh, they did let our cleaning lady go. She was told she had, she's a private contractor. She was told she had to have X number of dollars in insurance. She got that, she had her approved, she turned it in, they approved her. A week ago yesterday, they fired her because they said she didn't have enough. Plus, she needed to increase her automobile insurance. I don't know what that's got to do with cleaning the central hotel. Uh, I gave Mrs. Durbin her name and, and uh, phone number. So, But we do need some help up at the hotel. We're running a little rough shot on everybody. So, Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate, appreciate uh, uh, the, uh, the note there. I uh, made some notes and see what you have in there. All right. Um, I appreciate it. Thank you. So who do we, who takes care of hiring somebody to clean the hotel? Like who would, if somebody wanted to do that, who would they contact? Fairfield Holmes. Fairfield Holmes hires the people. President, I might mention to council that as a reminder, the city, uh, we do not have a legal interest in the hotel per se. As an owner right now, we have an interest in the company that owns it, but we're not in a position yet. We will be soon to take care of matters like this uh, from the, the, uh, the point of view of being an owner. Thank you, Mr. Paul. Sure. All right, we're going to move on to legislation. Uh, ordinance number 2022-34. Ordinance number 2022-34, entitled Ordinance Retaining McMahon DeGoulis LLP as Special Counsel to represent the City of Galleon in regulatory compliance matters and declaring an emergency. All right, discussion. Mr. Reed. I'd like to talk further about this because I, I don't think it's a good idea and I don't understand it. But um, I, I feel hiring outside legal counsel to represent the city against the Ohio EPA is, unnecess is unnecessary and is a waste of public money. How did we get here? Well, I've read the letters from the EPA, I've talked to the EPA, and it comes down to Nobody was, actually it comes down to the mayor's negligence. And the mayor became aware back in 2014 from a consultant and from the EPA that there were over 400,000 gallons of treated water not being billed on a daily basis. Remember, these consultants were paid for with city funds. And the mayor has chosen not to follow the recommendations of the consultants. The unbilled water problem is a, a great loss of revenue for both the water and the sewer, as a unit of unbilled water means a corresponding unit of unbilled sewer. The EPA has been willing to help the city with low interest loans to help fix our water problems. Uh, in fact, the mayor started the loan application process um, a little bit over, a little over a year ago, but he stopped in the middle of the process. Why? I don't think we need to hire lawyers to fix this. The mayor just needs to do his job. He's the administrator of the city, 
and this had been going on for a long time. He never told council members, or unless he did tell you, but I've, I've been told that he didn't tell you. So I just think it's the mayor's negligence and it's a waste of money. It could, the money for legal fees could get into the thousands of dollars. Is that fair to the citizens? Mr. Dr. Felder. Yes, I don't think that the uh, purpose of the outside legal counsel is to fight the EPA. That's not the that's not the intent. The intent was to facilitate and explain. Uh, Mr. Palmer is uh, very capable as the uh, city law director, but sometimes you just need a specialist when it comes to certain matters. And I, I feel like um, the water quality and uh, the EPA regulations um, are they're important enough that the, the, to have a legal counsel available to us it is a good step um, there there's a lot of things um, you know that need to be uh, uh, taken into account with the, uh, the treatment plant um, the reservoirs um, the, uh, with the EPA and with uh, ODNR. Um, so, the, uh, granted, you're absolutely right. There's a lot of work to do. Um, I don't feel like this is. Um, I feel like it's a waste of money. Well, Ms. Hall. I would just like to agree with what Dr. Fellner said, and, and we had a lengthy discussion at the last council meeting. I think about the pros and the cons that we heard from Ms. Durbin, and we talked about how. Um, this would be another tool in our toolbox or another player on our team. Um, it wouldn't be someone who would come in for everything. They would be contacted um, through the um, through Thomas's office to get direction and guidance whenever needed. And I do agree with Dr. Feller that this is just, I think, someone who's going to help to facilitate conversations and make sure that everyone's understanding each other and using the same language. So <clears throat> I think that. Uh, Everyone will have a different opinion about this, but I, I see the importance and the matter of fact is that we need it to stay within compliance and continue moving forward. Mr. Durbin, do you, do, you, do you want this to be resolved quickly? Do I want it to be resolved quickly? Mm -hmm. Do you want this, the issues that we're having to be resolved quickly? I don't think they can be resolved I, quickly. I, I, do you want them to be resolved quickly? Not necessarily. You don't to want them to be really resolved quickly? I'm, ask, is, I'm just asking. Are you talking about this ordinance? Well, no, no, no. I'm asking if you want the, the water and sewer issues to be resolved quickly. I don't think it can be done quickly. I, do you, I'm not asking if you think they can be done quickly. My, my point is that the, I believe that hiring a consultant or, or an attorney will help facilitate what, what's needed in a quicker manner so that we can get to where we want to in a faster way and and um and it's a small price to pay because it looks like city council can put parameters on the spending and and keep it under control and to it to a to a small amount so that's that's my viewpoint um mr Rick. i don't understand the law firm and it took Probably from 2012 to till now, but we'll go with 2014 to get to this point. Why are we at this point? And nobody wants to talk about that. If you read the letters, which I don't think anybody except me and, and Carrie have read the letters from the EPA and the city's response, the city's response is very, um, not a lot. But I also think that that a technician, an engineer, or whatever, would be able to sort out the technical stuff. And I thought we should. I thought we had somebody at the water department that could that knew this technical stuff, but we don't. Right. And I think well, that that's that's lacking. But this has been going on a long time. It's not something that just started overnight. It's been going on for a long, long time. Yeah, I think this is the quickest path to resolution. Mr. Richard. I'd just like to say that while I disagree uh, with Ms. Durbin that everybody around this table, as well as the folks out here, have all read those reports, um, the 
saying I agree with uh, Ms. All, Dr. Felder, and yourself that from a business standpoint, it is a wise person that, and most companies do this. It has nothing to do with trying to uh, uh, try to have some type of leverage or that we're just wasting money. It's always a good idea to have an attorney that is specialized in the field that Mr. Palmer and this ordinance is suggesting that we do. So that way, the legal parts are all covered, that there's no mistaken uh, description, there's no misunderstanding, uh, that we don't suddenly find ourselves where we did this and then find out after the fact that, well, I know you should have done this, you should add this. You, there's a lot of other parameters just other than just having a conversation with the EPA. The EPA is there to safeguard the uh, everybody, including the folks around this table. But again, I think that uh, while it's a there is a opportunity at some point to find out how we got here, which by the way, it actually looks like it started way back before we had changed the government. So, but the bottom line is so to get this resolved as quickly and exponentially as possible, we should make every effort in any way to get that accomplished. And if adding this individual to the, to that, uh, as uh, uh, Ms. all said, toolbox, then there, I don't see an issue with it. Mr. Bill. How, how do you, you said resolve this, is it a problem or what is it? What are we resolving? We're, fix, we're fixing what the issue was originally, the main thing, which is the uh, pH uh, issue. The TTH and, right. right. And subsequent, we also have to deal with the fact that you have a treatment <coughs> at both ends that is over 40 plus years old. Okay, while the maintenance has been done on those on limited factor, some of that factor is based on the income involved to do it. So there's a lot of parameters involved, but again, for this, this uh, purpose, the idea that we, we do need to have, or should have, or even should even be, I'm actually uh, glad that this has been suggested, that we bring in an outside counsel. This is uh, this is only the second reading, so we can we don't have to make make a decision tonight, right? Um, so, Mr. Palmer, Mr. Weber, members of council, uh, I wanted to repeat something that I did two weeks ago that I said. Um, I would encourage you not to think that this is hiring legal counsel as opposed to hiring engineering or consulting. This is hiring legal counsel that works with engineering and consulting, and in fact, as Ms. Ward can tell you, because she was in a, in a <coughs> Uh, we've had meetings with all these people together. Now, at the time, the attorney was not charging us for that purpose. But this is the way that that sort of system works. Uh, the attorney will have sort of legal technical expertise, plus he or she will have worked with these individuals in a regulatory environment. Uh, and in some cases, we'll know things that the, the uh, engineers will not, because that's not their particular Bent. Uh, and there has been additional communication with this attorney in the last two weeks. He has been forthcoming. He does represent other communities. Uh, this We're not going to be the only one that's going to be represented by him. Uh, so this is, again, the way that this kind of system works. And when I got brought into this conversation, it was as part of a consortium, part of a team. It was with both the consultant and the attorney and that we were going to work off through all of this together. Hopefully, the, the attorney involvement will not be terribly extensive because there'll be this ease of communication and there won't be the sense that we have to have that, but we will have that in our back pocket if needed. So, so I'm hearing everybody and I'm agreeing with everybody. Um, I just have other things. Um, in the past, I mean, all this, so I wasn't here when all this was happening, but in the past, there were consultants, and what they advised was not 
follows. So how do we guarantee that what is going to be advised now is going to be followed? If this is not a waste of money now, was those consultants then a waste of money? Um, I don't know. I'm just like I, said, I agree with what everybody said. I really do. Um, I just don't want to be you know spending more taxpayers' money if some of our funds are already low and we you know where we're raising rates to to cover things now. Why were we not starting to follow what the consultant said then and, and trying to make the necessary things that we're told? The EPA has been very clear um, as to what they want to see. Why was that stuff not being started then? Like, I feel like we may we may need the extra um, counsel, but at the same time, that's more money being spent there, so it's going to be less money in the funds, and some of that money could still go on starting to do some of these repairs that we're told that need to be done. I don't know. These are just my thoughts and, and questions. But like I said, I do agree with every, what everybody has said. Dr. Feldman. Well, I'm, um, I'm not sure that or, did we know that Mr. O'Leary was not going to be here today for the meeting? So I want to throw Ms. Ward under the bus. However, <laughs> Ms. Ward's the safety service director and has a long experience in dealing with the EPA and I, all I want her to do is just kind of weigh in on areas where this council could be valuable whereas in other areas maybe the solution is pretty straightforward. I, I, I don't know. Yes, I can't. We have hired GPD Group to help us with the planning and design of the improvements at the plant. So we have, we have retained an engineering firm for those purposes. But again, as Thomas said, um, the EPA is a huge organization. The departments interact in different ways. So this legal counsel will help us have a clear path of communication so everyone is on the exact same page. Everyone knows what the path forward is, and there's no question. So when we are designing these major improvements in the plant, we are sure that this is the direction the EPA wants us to go. So I think Dr. Bell, like you said, it's just another era, another tool in the toolbox to make sure everybody is speaking the same language and that we are making progress that the EPA wants us to make. So Ms. Ford, it's, it sounds it sounds like this this is not to create the plan, but more the next steps in implementation of a plan that's already in the process. Is that accurate? I would look at them as a facilitator. And talk as, as Mr. Palmer said, they have contacts within the EPA that I don't even know exist. So they can make these conversations happen more quickly and get all of the right people in the same room or on the same Zoom call to make sure we're, we're all going in the direction we need to go. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds like they're trying to create action. Yes. And it, it, it's not a planning phase at this point. Is that, does that answer your question, Ms. Siegel? A little bit. Yeah. And the GPD group that we approved last council meeting are the ones that are actually making the plan. So I feel like having this, out, this other entity will kind of make sure that we're following on the path. So the engineer says you need to do this, and we say, oh, I don't know. And then the blog, this, Part of it would say, well, we really do need to do that to stay within the EPA regulations and the service plan to get everything back into <coughs> where it needs to be to be in compliance. I think that was a good one. Mr. I would like to know why we haven't been following the EPA's regulatory for safe drinking water, <coughs> and it's just now come to this. I don't, that's what I'm not understanding. This has been, like I said, this has been going on for a long time. Why didn't we do it five years ago, four years ago, three years ago? I just think, I, I honestly think it's a waste of taxpayers' funds, and I don't think that's a burden that, should, that we should put on the citizens of Gallia. Do we have anything else? If not, let's move on. We'll, we'll allow this to get past uh, the second reading and move on to the third reading. Um, ordinance number 2022-35. <coughs> ordinance number 2022-35, entitled an ordinance authorizing the safety service director to advertise for bids and to enter into a contract with the lowest and best bidder, therefore, as provided by law, for the Brant Road Turn Lane Project to proceed authorizing payment, therefore, 
and declaring an emergency. Do you have any discussion? So I'm going to turn late. Mr. Senator. I will uh, add to what we had two weeks ago when we added the uh, amendment to say permanent improvement fund 401. <clears throat> that is accurate. After consulting with the, the state auditors and and trying to resolve the issue, um, there was $172,000 that was originally budgeted out of the 401 fund for this project. Uh, the project that went from 350 to 409-ish. Uh, what we've got, and we know we've got $150,000 coming back from the TIF. What will happen when this hap when this goes? So, assuming that you approve this pro this this project, then we will appropriate the money. We will appropriate the remainder of the 409500 out of the general fund, with the understanding that the TID money, the 150 that comes back, will be a reimbursement to the general fund. So the, the project in itself, the entirety of the project will be paid out of fund 401 with a with an not an advance, but a transfer into 401 from the from the general fund. When we receive the monies back, it will go back into the general fund. So small quick calculation, 172, it's you know, it's gonna cost maybe a hundred thousand dollars. On top of the what's in the 401 already, but that's how this is going to play out. So when we when we amended that last meeting, and we kind of did it on a shoestring, this is this is now accurate. We're not creating a new fund. We're not paying another 201 or 202. <clears throat> we'll be paying it out of 401 with the appropriation coming from the general fund. Thank you. And this is this is the eastbound. This is going to this be is the eastbound off of Brant Road turn lane. That I think the turn lane goes north. They will be done at the very end of the project, or instead of kind of done, and then in addition to the project, the widening project starts going. Thank you for following up and getting that clarified because so I don't think there's any amendment that needs to be done with this. Then when we go to fund it, there will actually be an ordinance to fund it. The project, so which we'll we'll do the appropriation transfer and stuff. All right, again, thank you, Mr. Weber. I, I, I'm going to ask uh, the safety service director if there's um, an urgency to, to bid this, or, or uh, uh, is a third reading appropriate? I'm actually going to defer to Matt on the second one because the one who worked with Gary and. And okay. <laughs> uh, no, it's not urgent if you wanted to uh, second reading. Thank you. Thank you. So, moving on, do you have any other discussion? If not, we can move on to ordinance 2022 36. Ordinance number 2022 36, entitled Ordinance Amending Ordinance Number 2021. Dash one one four permanent twenty twenty two appropriations by appropriating from unappropriated funds in various funds and declaring an emergency. This is all. Yeah, this is one that we kind of tabled last time also with the discussion of the legal <coughs> services because that's included in this ordinance. So I think probably unless there's any other if there's any urgency to the other things in here, we'll have to continue to put this onto a third reading as well. Mr. Senator, I will ask council to strike section four from this ordinance. We got ordinances coming at the end, uh, okay. so that we can pay that bill to the uh, in terms of money for the care. Dr. Thelma. Yes, I'd like to make a motion to strike section four. Um, uh, that paragraph, as Mr. Satterfield said, um, <clears throat> this. Uh, is ordinance 2022-36 uh, is uh, going to be held to a third reading, but it's pretty important that we get the state back uh, CARES dollars that we received. So again, I'd like to make a motion to uh, remove section four from ordinance 2022-36 as it appears <clears throat> later in the agenda as a separate ordinance. Motion to amend by Dr. Fellner, second by Mrs. Eager. Roll call. 
Dr. Fellner? Yes. Ms. Zeger? Yes. Ms. Alt? Yes. Mr. Bodkins? Yes. Ms. Durbin? Yes. Mr. Richard? Yes. All right, motion carried. Mr. Palmer? Yes, members of council, I wanted to just talk about two of these things real quick. I didn't want you to, I wanted to be clear about this. You'll see both section two and section three. Uh, appropriate from unappropriated funds, $20,000 each to uh, to the law department. One of those is for the outside council. The other one is for my office's share of the GPD uh, consulting contract. So I wanted you to understand that that wasn't suggesting that there would be $40,000 appropriated to go to outside council. Just want to be clear on that. Any further discussion? <coughs> we'll move on to ordinance number 2022-21. Ordinance number 2022-21, entitled Ordinance Authorizing and Directing the Safety Service Director to Advertise for Bids and to enter into a contract for a pad <laughs> liner for the Splash Park together with necessary construction. Um, just, just a reminder that this is coming from um, freeze funds and uh, not recreation funds because we don't have that much money in there. Um, Julie or Mr. Palmer. Mr. Palmer? Yes, ma'am. How do I... Um, How do I uh, make this that, that this can be defined? Does it have to go to the third reading? You, you have the ability to make a motion to suspend the rules and move it to a final reading. You can do that right now. Okay. I'd like to do it. I'm sorry. sorry. Excuse me. Okay. I'm looking at the figure of 75,000. Didn't wasn't it raised to 80,000? Yeah. Oh. Okay. So it didn't appear in the. Uh, that's right. So let's let's do that first. Okay, that's just that. a mistake. That was already done. So that's okay. So we don't have to. Yeah, it's just a typo. Not that's a typo. Okay. Yes. All right. So yeah, because that was made. Sorry, that's yeah, my, okay. my mistake. Yeah. That's all. I guess I'm still just. I asked this question last week, and I feel like it didn't get answered. Why it's coming through like this? I feel like I've never seen an ordinance come through with so many specifications on a project. I don't understand why we're looking at an ordinance that looks like this. I can do an ordinance any way I want. Well, I know you can do an ordinance any way you want. I guess just what I don't understand what's different about it. Like why? It's got the specs in there. From all of the other police projects that just got approved, why are we looking at those in the same way? Is it because they're not ready to be bid yet? Or and I'm not trying to be nasty. I just wanted to make sure that I understand or I didn't miss something last year. I was just this one. I don't think it's a requirement okay. to go through the committees, but I think it was a requested to go through the committee. Is that right? There, this is going through a committee, yes. This is the first time that an ordinance like this has present, been presented in this fashion. It doesn't make it illegal or impro improper. It's just not happened before. So, um, um, we, all, we can all learn new things, I guess that's what I'm saying. And there's nothing wrong with something yeah. being new or different. I just want to make sure I didn't miss something, or I sure. just want to make sure I understand what he's looking for. Sure. Well, the other freeze funds do not need to come through my committee. There's other committees that will, will address that at some point, I'm sure. Okay. Any further discussion? <laughs> Just, Mr. I'd, like, I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules and pass this on the second reading, Mr. Palmer. That will work, Paul. Okay. Could I have a second, please? Second, second. I usually ask for the second, but that's okay. I'll let it slide. <laughs> Roll call. Uh, Ms. Durbin. Yes. Ms. Eager. Yes. Ms. Alt? Yes. Mr. Bodkins? Yes. Yes. Dr. Fellner? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Richards? Yes. All right, motion carried. 
I'm moving on to ordinance number 20. Oh, that was just a oh, that was a I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got ahead of this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Dr. Feldman. Yes, could I make a motion to um, pass ordinance 2022-21? Motion by Dr. Feldman, second by Mr. Bodkins. Mr. President, I uh, have some questions about this to, before we go and pass it. Uh, there's uh, several things in here that I, I don't understand. Um, the one thing that I'm kind of curious about is I don't understand that uh, Ms. Durbin created, essentially had the ordinance created <coughs> um, with the uh, indicated items on here as a requirement. Um, Paula, what, where, did, where are these coming from? did you talk to? Uh, I talked to the city of Powell. You talked to the city of Powell, okay. okay. They had a beautiful splash park down there. And I took a lot of their specifications because their specifications were in their ordinance. Okay, so, but my question is, what contractor did you, did you get any type, other than talk to the city of Powell, did you get any type of uh, proposal? No. I told you that before. I have not gotten. I know you, you had said that. No, um, I am not. So there's no proposal. This is a just something that you picked up from how? Yes. Okay. It's, it's I, just the specifications for the splash park. I understand, but the, the question I have is because of the fact of the bidding process. Um, if you don't, how is is if we would pass this? How is uh, Nikki going to be able to bid this because it's a very specialized item. It's not something that uh, Mr. Contractor down the road here is going to um, be able to do. So where is she going to be able to go? I understand you not told them any of this until just now that you shared with us. Maybe that's a question from Ms. Ward. Do you, do you have you uh, um, explored any anything at this point on the, uh, based on the, the proposal that's been that's been through a couple of readings, do we have an idea of what cost might be? I have no idea. You have not. That's I fine. Have no idea. Okay. Yeah, this is kind of a new path. Sure. We haven't gone down before, so no, I don't know. Typically, either the engineer breaks the specs, or some other specialist breaks the specs to make sure we don't miss anything. So this is new territory. Mr. Palmer, if if we, if this ordinance is passed and it's, um, we're unable to meet the spec based on, uh, I know, I know, uh, you know, plastics and things like that change, um, yeah. like commodities change. So there, there could be um, certain specs that are um, based on when the splash part was previously put in. It's a pos it's possible that it's it's uh, difficult to meet spec. If if we find out that it's it's we're unable to meet spec, um, would it have to be sent back to the committee? Then is that yeah, what the? It might have to come back to council yeah. because it won't be able to be executed as okay. an ordinance in the way that it was created in past. Okay, proceed. Can I ask if if she called Powell and got these specs from them, is it possible that maybe we can consult with who they used? Um, because obviously, if they were able to do the specs there, yeah. why would it not be able to be done here? Yeah, I would Could imagine. Could we consult Ms. with that same company? I would imagine this board will, will, will kind of travel down that path to find out who they used. I would, I would guess. I don't want to speak for her, but um, there's always the outside chance that um, that a product is is no longer made that was once made, um, yeah. especially um, especially plastics and and uh, different agents of that sort. Um, because of uh, because it's very very much so commodity based uh, uh, that material is so it's it's possible that that it's it's no longer available. I was just concerned that if it was no longer available or if we had difficult call, difficulties meeting the spec, what the what the path might be. Mr. Durbin, Matt Uckleberry gave me the name of the company that built the splash park. So I went from there and I got different names from, from, from this company. They said, 
we don't we don't do the tag, but these are companies that do. Mm -hmm. So there are companies out there that do it. They may not be locally here, but then they may because the Y has a, a splash pad at the Y in Mansfield. And uh trying to think. well, Cedar Point does too. But that's well, she she knows what she's doing, I'm sure. Mr. Richard. Um, and she does. The only thing is about Paula is that we shouldn't be putting her in a position to uh, this these these, as you've indicated, specs uh, are very broad. The other thing is, my question would be, first of all, I didn't, since I didn't know anything about this, I'd ask you about this before, and you didn't tell me anything about the POW. I would like to know, okay, what was the parameters in which they put that in originally? Second of all, I'd like to know, was there any issues after the fact that they ended up dealing with? I understand because I've talked to the folks uh, to Matt uh, about it, and he got samples some of the other versions of this. So there's not just one version out there. No. So there's a myriad of things out there. This was I viewed your uh, uh, committees since this since the, the, when this was first brought up. There's nothing in there that tells me, and I'm not trying to be hard or anything, but it's like. My question is, I don't want to saddle us with something in a splash <coughs> that's going to, that three years down the road starts coming up. Or the other thing is, are we going to create another problem? Some of the samples that Matt showed me had a potential of, well, it would save uh, on the uh, scrapes. They were very sticky and tacky. And we're talking children. So the balance issue is a big one. So are we changing from scrape knees to somebody powdering a nose? Um, you know, those are things that I really would prefer to have discussed. Well, I know about. nothing about the, I've not seen any samples that Matt has. Well, no, because you never asked him about them. Oh, I have to ask. I'm sorry. Yeah. Because I would ask uh, any time that the, the uh, anything has come through council before, I know member, mem many members have asked, okay, where did you come up with this? And they would give us a, a uh, um, proposal, <coughs> and they would, it would spell out all the parameters involved. But we don't have this with, and I, 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 I'm glad you wrote to the ordinance and everything, but this is just a general window, and we're asking her to put her reputation in her thing on the line because she's responsible for any of this stuff. Not us here, she will be. So my question again, and I maybe I don't want this. Whatever Powell got, maybe I maybe as a council member, maybe as a citizen, maybe I don't think we needed that one. Maybe we needed this one over here. Or maybe that one over there. We haven't had that discussion. We've had we passed by that to step to get one I'm saying. Well, why didn't you bring it up at the first reading? Because I thought there was going to be a second reading. Oh, okay, okay. So it's a second reading. Now you want it to pass it as an emergency. So and in other words, you don't think that the children of Galleon should be have No, a I nice didn't say that. Safe I said path. I said what I said was I think the children of the Galleon, as well as the citizens of Galleon, including myself, should have the opportunity to know exactly and to pick the best. Just because Powell picked that, that might be best for them. That's no guarantee that that's best for Galleon or any other place. Dr. Scott, um, just to Ms. Durbin's point, um, uh, I specifically asked the mayor a couple weeks ago if passing this as an emergency would facilitate the pad being installed for this season. Oh, it's and, and right, right, I so, understand that, um, that part. The, uh, the question of children's safety is going to be again put off until next year. Right. So, well, I just like to I, I think the, 
I, you know, I, I, I think it's very important, um, but I, I think that the splash park currently has a pretty good safety record, so, yeah. you know, I just want to add that. Thank you. So, thanks. Have, have, have any of you gone out lately and looked at that pattern? Yeah. I have because I didn't know what you were talking about. This was initially whenever it came out. I didn't know what the splash park the concrete was like, they, so I did go look at it. They put, looks like they put blocks of concrete and there's grooves now with where the concrete has more or less separated. The ground has shifted. Well, like I say, that just goes to my point is that while, uh, and I'm glad you did the research you did, I would, would have liked to have been able to look at it as a member of this council to say, you know what, this might be a better fit for us here in Gallatin as opposed to the folks in Powell or any other location. You're, 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 I'm not, I mean, did your idea that one, one particular item that you had picked out was <coughs> what you felt was the perfect uh, thing for this particular um, situation, none of us else had the opportunity to discuss that. Even your committee didn't get a chance to do that because you didn't have any of that information there. I mean, we're at the we're basically at the third reading, so it's either up or down in this case. Well, this is the second reading, but it's been passed. Yeah, no, it's the first it's right. Right. It's it's a suspension, a suspension of the rules. rules. Right. Right. Oh, yeah. right. Suspension. I'm sorry, suspension mm -hmm. of the rules. So, I'm just trying to understand. What exactly are you are you wanting? Can we have map frame samples where we all can look at them? Yeah, he's um, got. I mean, the, the point is that the idea was that I would have liked to see or known about what she. I mean, her mind, your your choice or your one that you looked at or talked to him about, I guess, might be the best choice. But I don't know that. Because I have no idea where that come from. You don't have an idea where they came from. You said it came from Powell did it. But you don't have a name who put that in. You don't have a proposal from those folks. You don't understand you don't have any anything on it. Not to mention I understand it is is going well, to be not, a requirement it's, it's, from the health department. It's not my job to decide a company or something. If no, you but you them, have to get the ordinance. But you drafted the ordinance. If yes. you're going to have somebody draft an ordinance, which is your right, and it's every, in my opinion, every legislator's right to do, then I would say you need to make sure, and at least I would, that you would have the, all the information so that it would be a basically a, a direct line from point A to point B. And I would include all the members, especially your own committee. I think we're. I think we're. I think uh, we're at it. I, I think we're. We've. I'm going to call. We've kind of exhausted that, so I don't know if we have. Do we have anything? Any any further discussion on this, Doc? Or I'm sorry, Mr. Oh, just Mr. Yes, Mr. Palmer. Yes, sir. Hey, hey, that's what we've come to at ninety thousand. The best we could get. Do we have to go through this again? Well, there is when you set something in, and put an estimate in, at an that. ordinance. No, there is some wiggle room with that, but there's there's a parameter to that. Yeah. And if it comes in too high, yes, you can't be awarded. Well, the way things are going up, you never know what product is going to cost you. Yeah. So that's all I have worried about. Yeah. Thank so, you. We'll see here. Can I just ask, um, Matt, can we all have um, chances to come see those samples, or can you bring them to a council meeting so we can see those samples and, yes. and then we can further discuss? I mean, yeah. That's all well and good to, to view, but it's not our job to pick out a color for right. the, no. the walls. It's, no, no, that's true. It's Ward's job. And, you know, we're just going to, you know, sit around the table, <clears throat> soon to be seven of us, picking out swatches is just going to delay her job. So, I mean, uh, let's, you know, let's get an idea of what the cover looks like, but we can't sit in here in a meeting with it a thousand degrees in a room <laughs> and, and I wanna I wanna help this board out. Anyway, we do have a motion on the table. That's right. So I mean um, I we've got
got wiggle room to back up or, you know, I, I don't know, Mr. Palmer. There was a motion to suspend that passed. Yeah, so this is the final reading yeah, at this point. Right, and I made a motion to pass. Mm -hmm. That's right. Was it? Was there a second? Yes. Okay, and then, then we have so discussion. Ready for roll call. Yep. So now we're ready for roll call. Yep. That's right. Yep. Is, uh, you're either doing that, Dr. Fulner, or you're backing off your motions. Can you back off the suspension? Well, no, not the suspension, Julie. The, but he passed. He made a motion to pass the ordinance after the suspension. Did you not, Doctor? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I didn't know because we already had. We already suspended the rules. No, the, it, it, it clearly is. Mm -hmm. The rules are suspended, which means this is the last reading. Okay. This is as if this came to you tonight as a third reading. Okay. Um, so you have made a motion to pass. There's been a second. If you both would withdraw those, you can make a different motion. Um, you know. Uh, a motion to table, a motion to put back in committee, you know, the various things that you do have at your disposal. But didn't we already, didn't Julie take a roll call? We have not taken a roll only call. Only on the, on, we took only on the suspension. On the suspension, the suspension of the rules, so this is the third reading. Yeah. And, and we're, we're, we're in the discussion phase just before roll call on passing. Yes. So, in for. One more question, I'm so sorry. Yes. If this passes tonight, we obviously know this is not going to happen this year, this summer. So we have till next year. So we have all this time to still iron out all of this, right? Well, well I mean, <laughs> can, um, yes, sir. Okay. I really don't know. I just have to be wrong because the cost of the product will probably go up a lot yes. by next year. So I think that it would want to be put out for the bid process that we could secure an estimate. So that way, next year, whenever this goes out, it's not in any five years. This will take 30 days to be effective. You could, in that 30 days, if you were to pass this tonight, revisit it by uh, amending an ordinance. Well, uh, Julie, is on a motion to reconsider? I think so, but I think it has to be in the next it's There's a limitation to it. I think it has to be in the next meeting. The bottom line is if you voted that tonight, it's, it's, it's effective. It is effective. Um, you At any time in the future, you have the ability to repeal ordinances which you have heard, you have passed. Right. right. Any time. Right. Um, so you could actually pass it tonight and then in three months change it. Mm -hmm. All right. Any further discussion? Not, I think we're ready to move on. Dr. Goner. Yes. Mr. Bodkins. Yes. Ms. Durbin. Yes. Mr. Richard. No. Ms. Zeger. Yes. Ms. Alt. Yes. Okay, motion carried. Uh, five, five, one. Thank you. All right, we're going to move on to ordinance 2022-39. Uh, ordinance number 2022-39, entitled Ordinance Authorizing the Safety Service Director to submit an application for grant funds under the Ohio Airport Grant Program and declaring an emergency. Dr. Felton? Yeah, I'm just uh, hmm, uh, going to ask Ms. Ward to... Define ordinance 2022-39. Hold on, this is our third try. Okay. And this is the weather system, the, correct? Uh, yeah, the automated weather system, so pilots can check conditions before they move. Um, this is a 95-5 split, so 95% um, through ODOT and then 5% will be the city's responsibility, same as it has been in the past. The cost has gone up a little bit, but our shares are 14,000 to 25. Again, this is our, our third time going for this project. Is there a grant deadline this morning? Um, yes. Actually, yes, there is. I believe the legislation, I think, I want to say by the end of this week, we, we submitted the application and then the legislation will come after as we do often grants, which is 
So we're going to be motion to suspend the rules if this is something that we want to take if we want to be able to to do before the grant deadline. Does anybody have any other questions or other discussion? Mr. President, um, as Ms. Schwartz indicated, this is uh, for weather um, uh, out at the airport. Um, as a pilot, uh, the ability to have uh, current weather in a timely fashion <coughs> doesn't always happen. It's very, very important. Uh, it will actually give uh, the airport a step up more than it already has as a place where uh, pilots will like to come into, which in turn will make the uh, cost of that airport less and less. So uh, having said that, and since this is our third try, keep the fingers crossed, uh, I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules on 2022-39 and move it to the final reading. Mr. Richards. I have a question. Where is where does well, the weather we come from? from? We can we 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 find out if there's a second first before we have, then we can have discussion yeah. just immediately following. I'll second that motion. Second by Dr. Feller. Discussion? No, no, not on that. It's supposed to suspend the meeting. Oh, okay. Mr. Richard? Yes. Dr. Feller? Yes. Ms. Zeger? Yes. Ms. Alt? Yes. Mr. Rodkins? Yes. Ms. Durbin? No. All right, motion to suspend the rules, pass five to one. Motion carried. Dr. Feller? Yes, could I uh, make a motion to uh, pass ordinance 2022 dash? Help me do it. 39. Thank you, 39. Motion to pass by Dr. Felmer, seconded by Mr. Botkins. Uh, discussion? Uh, Mr. President, I think Ms. Durbin had a question. Mr. Where is the weather coming from for this? Where is it? Um, I don't understand this guy. I think what she's asking for. Uh, Nikki, you probably can explain a little bit better. She's asking what this actually is in the sense of a structure or such. And there, there will be a structure out of the airport that is constantly monitoring wind, temperature, all of this. Thing. So there will be a, an actual, it looks like a small tower. Like they have a field. I don't know about Mansfield, but it, yeah, there's a, there will be a tower and it's monitored by the FAA. Yeah, there's several uh, all others, uh, other weather stations around the country. Um, I know where I used to be stationed at the Coast Guard Station at Marblehead, they have a weather station also, and that's, that's to give you the most accurate, real-time weather uh, that you can get. Because a lot of times when you're, well, we've seen it, you can be on this side of town, it's not raining a dang, and on this side of town, it's raining cats and dogs. So. That's, that's what it's designed for. That's fine, thank you. Sure. Good discussion. Roll call. Dr. Fellner. Yes. Mr. Bodkins. Yes. Ms. Durbin. Yes. Mr. Richard. Yes. Ms. Zeger. Yes. Ms. Alt. Yes. Motion to Six zero, yeah. Twenty uh, ordinance number twenty twenty two dash twenty. Ordinance number twenty twenty two dash twenty and silent ordinance establishing sewer charges for customers within and outside the corporation limits of the city of Galleon for bills rendered on or after June first, twenty twenty two, repealing inconsistent inconsistent ordinances and resolutions and declaring an emergency. Thank you. Do you have any discussion? That's all. This came through the Utilities Committee, and I'm sure we'll have a, another lively discussion on um, this ordinance. This ordinance is um, written to increase the sewer rate to be consistent with what the water rate is now. Um, as Ms. Durbin indicated earlier in her um, talk when we were talking about the law director, is the earth the legal counsel is that the water and sewer is metered at the same rate. So it kind of makes sense, I think, to have them bill at the same rate. Um, we've looked back and 
there has not been an increase of cost for sewer since there was a decrease of cost for sewer in 2011. So it's been 2014. Since 2014. So it's been eight years since the cost of the sewer has been um, changed in the city of Gallup. Um, right now it is lower than the water cost um, and we are running our sewer department at a deficit currently so it costs more to process the sewage than we charge the customers to do it so this isn't a substantial business model it's not something that we as a city can sustain long term we've watched the fund balance drop year after year because we've been putting off wanting to raise the sewer rates which i don't think anyone sitting around this table thinks raising rates is fun um, it's done out of necessity. Um, we all pay our utility bills in the city of Gallion as well. Um, I also think it is important to note that um, a lot of thought and consideration was put into this, and I think that the question again will arise, how did we get to this point of having the sewer rates not be reflective of the cost? And I think it's important to note that this council is new and that we can't fix what previous councils did or did not do and it's time to be proactive in our approach to making sure that all of our systems are fiscally responsible and that we are obtaining the right amount of money for the services that we're providing. So with that, um, that's kind of what came through the committee. All right, thank you. Ms. Ward, do you, is there anything that you'd like to add? Um, no. No. Okay. No, thank you. All right, any further discussion? This is the first reading. I don't believe this is the first reading. So this money is going to come in handy for doing that, trying to try to figure out how to come up with the money. So it's really a necessity that we follow this forward. And that was something that we discussed in committee also was, you know, it, has there been a plan to keep maintenance on the sewer plant? Has there been a plan to continue to do things with sewer lines and all this? And I think that, as we've talked about with many of the issues around this table, it's hard to make plans and execute good change and to keep up with things systemically if you don't have the funding to do that. So I agree with Mr. Hawkins on that. Um, my only concern would be we just raised the electric rates and now we're going to raise the sewer rates and then it's next going to come the water and I'm not trying to be rude but all of these are on one bill like everybody gets your bill like all this is together and so these people on fixed income down here I've talked to people I've seen people making comments on Facebook saying like how are we supposed to pay our bills so these people on fixed incomes are already struggling and they're going to struggle more well I know that we're in a deficit and we you know we need to get the funds up um, without having a plan to show these people so that they're more comfortable with it, I feel like that's a disservice to our community. If we had a plan where we could actually, you know, show everybody, we could post it out there, people could say, okay, you know, I want to know where my funds are going, rather than if you don't have a plan and they don't really know where it's going. You know, I have a little concern about that. Sure, that's all. And I think that with the GPD group that we hired last council meeting that made the plans, the engineering group to show this is what we're going to do to the sewer plant. I think that that's a good step to show, like, hey, this is what we're doing. And it's nice also because with that money to make those upgrades, that's coming from the American Rescue Plan. So that's even being even more fiscally responsible to say we're looking for other ways to fund these things, but we have to have enough money to pay the people that work there, to pay everything and last budget year we took out kind of those ancillary charges of like they aren't paying their utility bills this year and they're not paying their share to the auditor because we tried to be as responsible as we could to shave off every extra charge to the taxpayer in the electric the water and the sewer lines and that was a huge hit to all of to the electric department to the auditor's department to i think everything and we i can say that i feel like we try to do what we can do to save money and to make it stretch and it is hard you know and i think that we talked about you know it's also hard just to say inflation just to say inflation and then everyone's like oh yeah inflation but i also see on facebook all the comments and i see too that people post about their spectrum bill going up or this bill going up and that bill and i filled up my car today and i drive a little honda civic and i about have a heart attack but i understand that the cost of everything is so high and 
I think that all of us that sit around this table, you know, understand, have been in a position before, or are in a position now where sometimes it's hard to pay your bills, and it does, or it does suck. I mean, there's no other way to say it, and I don't pretend that that's not true, but I think that following the recommendations of GPD, continuing on to show that we are working this plan to make it better, um, I think is good, and I think that, you know, the next budget year, you know, we're looking at budgeting, budgeting and money for those years to, you know, make up that lost water that was noted in 2014, also eight years ago, um, I think is a good plan, too. And I think that'll be able to come around next budget year, but that's kind of hard to do in the middle of the campaign. Thank you, Mr. Well, the sewer fund at the beginning of this year had 1,833,273.62. That's the highest I've seen it, I think, from Governor and Galleon. That's pretty good. And even the mayor mentioned that was a pretty good uh, sum to start out the year with. And he also mentioned that he wanted to use 800000 of that to pay off debt. And that that's a very, very healthy sum. That's better than it was when we were in fiscal emergency. And the debt that Mr. Ben's referring to is the lift station and the screw pump that were final pieces that needed to be replaced or put in so that our sewage system could continue to operate. Yeah, we have to pay for those. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Ms. Hall. Thank you, Mr. Any any further discussion? This is the this is the first reading. Um, so, with no further discussion, we can move on to the uh, the next ordinance. Uh, ordinance 40, I believe, is that correct? Yes. So, ordinance number 2022-40. Ordinance number 2022-40, and have ordinance amending ordinance number 2021-114, permanent 2022 appropriations by appropriating from unappropriated funds in the Coronavirus Relief Fund and declaring an emergency. Dr. Feldman. Uh, yes, this is the ordinance that I was made reference to earlier um, where we took out section four. This is uh, money that the city of Galleon owes uh, the state of Ohio uh, as a return for the Corona Relief Fund. Um, Mr. Satterfield asked that it be separated into um, a, a separate ordinance so he could get that check written um, because from what I understand the state of Ohio has indicated to Mr. Satterfield that they want their money so <laughs> I say uh, let's go ahead and do this and I'd like to make a motion to uh, suspend the rules and pass ordinance 2022-40 on the, uh, to the final reading. Dr. Feldman made the motion. Ms. Eager? Second. Second. Um, roll call. Dr. Felmer? Yes. Ms. Seeger? Yes. Ms. Alt? Yes. Mr. Bodkins? Yes. Ms. Durbin? Yes. Mr. Richards? Yes. Motion carries 6 0. Dr. Felmer? I'll make a motion to pass ordinance 2022 40. All right. Motion by Dr. Felmer, second by Mr. Bodkins. Discussion? No discussion. Roll call. Dr. Felmer? Yes. Mr. Bodkins? Yes. Ms. Durbin? Yes. Mr. Richard? Yes. Ms. Eager? Yes. Ms. All? Yes. Motion carried 6-0. Moving on to resolution number 2022-7. Resolution number 2022-7, entitled Resolution Approving and Ratifying the Prior Act of the <coughs> Department Heads and Safety <coughs> Service Director and Approving a then announced Certificate for said Expenditure and Declaring an Emergency. Thank you. Do we have any discussion? Uh, Mr. Chatterton. This just goes right along with the previous ordinance, but the fact is, is that we got the information from the state prior to appropriating the money. <clears throat> Therefore, we have an invoice before the date, so we have to do it then announce a certificate to pay the bill that you just passed. So that's, that's just cleaning that up and making that legal. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Feldman? Yes, could I um, make a motion to suspend the rules and proceed to the final reading on resolution 2022-7. Motion by Dr. Felner, second by Mr. Bodkins. 
Dr. Bellner? Yes. Mr. Bodkins? Yes. Ms. Durbin? Yes. Mr. Richard? Yes. Ms. Zeger? Yes. Ms. Alt? Yes. Thank you. For the discussion, Dr. Bellner? Yes, can I make a motion to pass resolution 2022-7? Motion by Dr. Bellner, second by Ms. Zeger. Discussion? Roll call. Dr. Bellner? Yes. Ms. Zeger? Yes. Ms. Alt? Yes. Mr. Bodkins? Yes. Ms. Durbin? Yes. Mr. Richard? Yes. Motion carried 6 0. All right, very on. Very good. Moving on to <coughs> other business. <coughs> um, we want to go around and, uh, and we have some dates for, um, for the different uh, committee meetings. Um, we'll start, uh, we'll just kind of go counterclockwise. That's all. Our utilities committee meeting is the first Tuesday of June, which we'll have another meeting before then. Actually, yeah. actually yeah. your utility is usually first Wednesday. It was first yeah. Wednesday. Yeah, what I, I might want to bring it up. Uh, June 1st. June 1st. Right. 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 I have to be on this. I'll, I'll jump in there real quick. Oh, sure. Uh, yeah. It's long ordinance would then be on day. the uh, 7th. All right. Thank you, Mr. Richard. It's on the 7th, you said. Yeah. Correct. All right, 7 o'clock, correct. Right. Parks, Parks and Recreation tomorrow night. Here. At what time? Seven. Seven. Yes. No, we're having it at nine. <laughs> just want to make sure sometimes we have them at a little bit early to include the second meeting or something. So I just want to make sure that everybody that's listening knows what time they are. Dr. Feldman? Yes. Um, the Finance Committee will be um, May 18th, Wednesday, 7 p.m. Um, economic Development and Airport uh, will be Tuesday, the 17th. 7 p.m. I'm kind of speaking for the empty chair. <laughs> chair of that committee. Very good. Thank you. Mr. Bodkins. The streets of the uh, committee will be on the 12th of 7th. You're not having, you're having this, this Thursday at 7? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, I guess that leaves me. So the Police, Fire, Health, and Safety Committee um, meeting will be May 19th. Um, that is a Thursday at 7 here. I don't know why I said eight years to get one in there. I apologize. <laughs> That's okay. Thank you. All right, very good. Um, move over to the elected officials. Uh, Mr. Sandfield. Um, Given all of you the thank you, sir. Um, my my report, the expense report, were three hundred forty-three thousand six hundred dollars in expenses so far month to date. <coughs> Revenue were at one point two three million year to date uh, or month to date. That does include the freeze money. I did get that check, and then the the last. Couple pages as you show our statement of cash position. Uh, there's a few natives in there. I will again tell you that reconciliations are still ongoing, so we have not squared up some of the fund balances. Uh, in particular, would be police and fire pension, where you have um, transfers from the general fund. If you look at the Port Authority, the seventy-five thousand dollar negative, that check has been cut, and they are in possession of it. And it's just a matter of when they cash it. So that will, that will take care of that itself. Um, everything else looks in pretty decent shape. Uh, we are paying bills; they're in pretty good shape. We put, a, we put a pretty good dent in the bills. We are, I think, about two weeks behind on the bills, which is not too awful bad. The gap audit is ongoing. Uh, the auditor, state auditor's office has been in and, and they're wrapping that up. So the second part of the gap audit will be done shortly, I think. Um, questions? No questions or reservations? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Um, Mr. Palmer? 
Thank you. A um, couple quick things about the hotel and the hotel. Uh, as I mentioned before, the hotel, Central Hotel, is not yet closed for there's no hiccups in that, it's just going to take a little bit of time. Uh, the second thing is that um, in the area of the other hotel, the Sleep Bank, uh, we have, are finally finalizing uh, the appropriation action that we've taken that you authorized a year and a half ago to uh, actually uh, acquire short and long-term interest in the, in the uh, roadway. So uh, that's finally coming to a, con a conclusion. Everything's gone very well. Uh, the last thing is just as a heads up, I believe, and Julie, please correct me if I'm wrong, that May 15th is the deadline for filing your financial disclosure form yes. with the state of Ohio. And I have never failed, but I hear that there's nastiness that comes with the failure to do so. So there you go. Thanks for the reminder. Sure. All right. All right. I don't have any further talk. I do have, uh, um, I guess I do have. Uh, Yours is after. The yes, my, yeah, my final comments will come after we move into executive session. So. Can we have, take a small break and go to the restroom before I have questions? Oh, yeah, once I make the motion and, and yes, yes. 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 Yep. Right, right, right. Dr. Dr. Bell. Uh, you said that we would go after we go into executive session? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, I'd like to make a motion to go into executive session <coughs> for the purpose of conducting second ward candidate interviews. All right, motion made by mm -hmm. Dr. Feldman. Second by Mr. Richard. Roll call. Dr. Feldman. Yes. Mr. Richard. Yes. Ms. Zeger. Yes. Ms. Alt. Yes. Mr. Bakke. Yes. Mr. Mm -hmm. Mr. Executive Section 816. I will turn off the camera.